Um, what I thought watching the movie is that Sandra isn't a victim, but a sort of superhero, and that her powers are a pair of work uh, boots and a hammer. Uh, I would like to know if you had a chance to talk to other women uh, about uh, her behavior and how uh, she could be an inspiration to other women. Um, when Claire Dunn first started um, researching this before she began even writing the screenplay, she went to talk to women's aid in Ireland. And one of the women working there said, if you're going to write this film, do not make this woman a victim. Because many of these women in this situation are heroes. They are full of courage. They have the courage to stay and the courage to go. And they may not go until they know they would rather die than, than stay but they know that they may die in leaving the house. So Claire wanted to, I think, share um, the message of somebody who actually does navigate this aftermath of post-traumatic shock and is able to come through this and construct something for her children. And it's a really fundamental, um, part of the message of the film. And yes, we do want to give hope and inspiration to women who are in this situation. And Claire Dunn is, is such a revelation. She's so brilliant and she co-wrote the, the script. Uh, but at the beginning, she, uh, doesn't, she didn't want to, to play the role. Uh, how did you convince her and um, why you, you want so badly that she, uh, she to be the, the, the main character? Yeah, okay, it's, it's not true that she didn't want to play the role. She just thought she's never done any film before. She wants to get this film made. So she's thinking, maybe I just have to, you know, she doesn't care. She's just thinking, I want to get this story out there. And she thought maybe she would play, at that time, there was a small sister character in the early drafts. And she thought, maybe I'll play the sister. And then I just began to think, this is ridiculous. She has to play the lead. And if I get behind this film, maybe I can make that happen. And Claire and I have worked together for five years. In the th I've been directing her as an actress in the theater for five years, playing huge Shakespearean leading roles, majorly powerful men, a lot of them, because we were working in an all female collective. So, I know her very well, we're great friends. I know her, all her talents as an actor. And I was just so, I was, she was struggling to get work on screen, partly because of the mark on her eye. And I just thought to hell with this, you know, this woman is so gifted, so talented. We're gonna show the world what that is. And uh, one of the aspects I really enjoy about the movie is the ability to turn away uh, cliches and uh, twists that um, the audience might expect. Uh, I would like to know how did you work on this with, with Claire, because uh, this is one of the best thing about the movie. Well, I think that we're both... Um, it, it may be part of the Irish sensibility that um, dark and light lie very close together, that life never seems to be just that. You know, one minute, especially in Ireland, you know, somebody dies and the next minute someone's cracking a joke and everybody's laughing. So this tone of it being, you know, very like this, not melodrama, but um, kind of life, like, I don't know about you, but my day often contains, you know, sort of trauma, laughter, it's all, it's all there. But I think that sometimes in movies, there's a tendency for it to be a genre. So it's, you know, it's all horror or it's all tragedy or it's all social realism, it's all bleak, whatever. But there was something about what Claire had written. There's a, there's a small element of the mythic in this the story that comes to Claire, comes to Sandra, is, is her daughter telling her about the story of Saint Bridget, this ancient Irish saint who asked, who went to the powerful 
king and asked for land. So there's something lying under this that is beyond logical. And it's not a fairy story, but it's got colors that are perhaps not as expected as, yeah. So I suppose we just want to do the film that nobody else has done. And the movie title may suggest that Sandra is alone. Instead, you, you show us that she couldn't succeed without the help of others. And uh, this is a theme that is so actual, but also timeless. Do you feel like that your movie now with the, with, with the pandemic um, can be more close to, to people, that they, your movie can reach people uh, easily? Well, first of all, I think that the pandemic has made the themes of the film of isolation and community so potent. It's quite almost strange that we made this before. Um, we're very aware that millions of women all over the world are, because of the pandemic, in extreme situations of domestic abuse. We know that helplines in all kinds of countries are so busy with women ringing who are trapped in lockdown in abusive situations. But on the other side of it, we all have become to understand what it is to be a neighbor, to need our neighbors, to be helping our neighbors, to question, you know, am I a good enough neighbor? So this theme of community is also terribly important where we are relying on each other um, in some cases, people are relying on each other for their survival, for food, whatever, if they're, you know, they're shielding in their homes. Um, and yes, we want to, you know, you can be as a director very protective and say, my movie must just be in the cinema. It's a big screen experience and that's my art and that's what I've done. But I feel with this, if it can get onto the computer of a woman who is stuck inside a house in this situation and she clicks on this and finds it on Amazon Prime, whatever it's going to be, and this story gives her some strength, then that's the purpose of it. Thank you so much for your time and congratulations for your beautiful movie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.